Hello and I welcome you back to the Big Fat Mixed Media Tribe. Today I will show you a Halloween inspired art channel page and something really really wonderful you can do with a black gesso. I am working in a big art journal. It is a four size art journal and I'm splitting my page into top part and bottom part just very roughly, no precision required. And I will be covering the bottom part with this page from a gardening magazine, I think. So I'm roughly measuring the size of the paper and I will glue it down using a gel medium. I've decided not to glue several pieces of paper down because the top part of the page will be quite structured so I've decided to keep the bottom part of the journal page quite flat although there will be several layers on top. So I'm using a very wide brush to make the job faster and easier to spread the gel, me gel medium. Uh, this time I'm using a very liquid gel medium because the area that needs to be covered is quite big. And let's glue this page down. The you will not see a lot of it at the end, but there will be some speckles of green uh, shining through all the other layers on top. And then just to calm down the uh, very bright magazine page, I'm applying a layer of white acrylic paint and I'm using uh, the silicone brush to apply the paint just to avoid the uh, brush strokes that you get if you use a brush for that. Uh, of course I let this layer to dry and I am stamping uh, two very gorgeous stamps, this chandelier and this um, uh, architectural stamp which is like a part of a bridge, part of a fallen down castle it's not very gothic, but still, I think it looks beautiful. And I'm using an archival link. I usually use archival link on our journal pages as it makes applying next layers much more easier. I don't need to be worried about um, smearing the ink. And now to the black gesso. We will see something really, really cool. <laughs> what a black gesso can do <laughs> and for that I am applying a layer of the black gesso on the top part of my art journal page and of course I'm letting it dry and while my black gesso dries I'm adding some more white paint on top of the uh, bottom part of the page just to tie in the black stamps better And here I have to really ask for your forgiveness. I've lost the footage and <laughs> of how I applied also just the tiniest amount of uh, purple acrylic paint on the outer edges of the page. But I use the same method with the silicone brush to apply it. And I'm using a pencil here to mark the, a very rough circle. In, on the bottom part of my page because I want to draw a breath. So the pencil line will, you, will serve me as a guide where I need to draw my branches. I'm using a, a black acrylic paint marker to draw my branches because I don't have any branches stencils or breath stencils. Of course it would be much easier if I had a stamp or a stencil for that, but I don't have them, so I'm using uh, a acrylic paint and drawing the breath myself. I'm drawing um, wider or thicker branches uh, in the middle and then thinner branches all around.
So drawing the rest did take some time. I sped it up here quite a bit. But I quite enjoyed this um, part of the page. And then I'm switching to a smaller a black marker and I'm adding uh, this little uh, darker touch. I'm turning some ends of the branches into snake heads. So my idea was that it is difficult to tell if the rest is made of branches or are they snakes. So I'm trying not to go overboard with the snake heads. I'm adding just four or five I think here and there. It's not very difficult. Again, if I cut a stamp, I would use a stamp. I don't have snake stamps, so I'm just drawing um, very rounded uh, triangles for my snake heads. And then I switched the marker again to even thinner one uh, to draw the tongues of the snakes. Just a little V-shape at the end of each head. And now to the beautiful part. The black gesso has dried, so I covered the bottom part of my page and I'm using this absolutely amazing stencil by Fina Bear. It's a gothic script and it's beautiful. It's a wonderful size, the letters are beautiful. It was very difficult to get hold of this uh, stencil, but I'm really, really happy that I have it. And it works wonderfully. And just wait until the lif I lift the... <gasps> See? <laughs> when I lift the stencil, the results are absolutely beautiful. And uh, just for some balance on the corner that was left free, I'm adding uh, some geometrical stencil and the same uh, paste through the stencil again. And just wait until I lift the stencil and the paper. Wow, it looks beautiful as it is. And for a moment I contemplated leaving the text white. But I want to show you this very amazing thing, what happens. Uh, if you add inks on the uh, structure paste, if it's been applied over a black gesso, I'm using set after inks, spray inks, they come in really gorgeous uh, colors. And I will be using this beautiful dark teal color on one side of my page, and I'm applying a thicker layer at the very um, edge of the page and just a tiny touch going into the center because I want to take my next color which is this um, rich delicious yellow and see what happens here where the yellow mixes with the blue you get green that's wonderful and do you notice what the inks are doing the inks are soaking into the uh, structure paste the inks are coloring the paste and this gorgeous purple on the edge. I'm trying not to overlap the yellow and the purple very much because they do not make a beautiful color together. And do you see this? And the background stays black. Of course it's not black but you just cannot see the inks on the black gesso. And it looks like um, I've spent hours and hours painting every single letter with several colors. I absolutely love this effect that you get with inks on top of the black gesso. Well, <laughs> uh, I used uh, a dark grey marker just to repeat the contours of my branches to add some shadows. So quite randomly I'm going around my breath and adding um, uh, lines to imitate shadows to just to add some more interest to the breath. And to mark the border very clearly, embossing ink in a dabber just to have a thinner line and applying a generous amount of golden embossing powder. 
I even use my fingers to press the powder into the ink just to make sure that really good amount of powder sticks to the ink. And of course, <laughs> I chose a very tiny paper to gather my excess uh, embossing powder. So I need obviously bigger paper because I've used a lot of powder on this. So the excess powder goes back into the jar and now let the heat gun work the magic and melt the powder. This is one of the joys of uh, <laughs> our journaling, just watching the embossing powder melt, isn't it? <laughs> So this way I get two very distinctive sides of my art journal page, very different, but still I think they work well together because there is some repetition of colors and the mood on the top and the bottom part. And now all that's left is to add the sentiment. I'm adding a little ephemera piece which looks like, um, you know, one of those big illuminated letters at the beginning of um, ancient manuscripts and the sentiment there is something going on up in the attic Ooh. <laughs> and I use the black marker with a brush nib to go around my sentiment and I finish the page by choosing a black archival ink and just lightly applying it around the edges of the page to frame the bottom part of my journal page and to make it go better with the dark uh, top part of my page. So this was my Halloween inspired art journal page. I leave you today with still images of this page and some close-ups, especially pay attention to the close-up of the uh, beautiful gothic script. And if you like the page, please press the subscribe button. And I see you soon with more inspiration for your own art journal pages. Bye-bye, see you soon.